Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. And in this video in our IGCSE Chemistry Revision Series, we will be looking at a pretty basic concept of molar gas. And why it's important is because it, you will have to use this concept when solving problems in stoichiometry. All right. So in our previous, 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 previous video on the mole, we looked at how we can find the quantity of atoms inside a body, or essentially the number of moles of atoms inside a body. Moles is a very, very uh, important unit. And we can do this by dividing the mass of the substance by the molar mass of that particular substance, which is basically a constant. All right. Now, in this video, we are going to be looking at gases and how we can do the same. And um, but we're going to use a different a different concept and a different assumption. Okay, so let's take a gas vessel, a particular gas vessel filled with a gas, and uh, this vessel will have uh, very important states such as pressure, volume, and temperature. Um, and basically, I am going to um, give this gas vessel very important uh, uh, standard values such as. The pressure will be at one atmosphere, and the temperature will be at room temperature, which is from 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. All right, so we call this state um, essentially room temperature and pressure, or standard state. All right, and the basic assumption for any particular gas at room temperature and pressure that we can use in IGCSE level stoichiometry, that is one mole of any gas will occupy 24 decimeters cubed volume. All right. So for any particular gas, we are going to assume at, the, at room temperature and pressure, one mole of that gas will occupy 24 decimeters cubed of volume. Okay. So there's essentially a, a linear ratio between the number of moles and the volume of gas in which the, uh, the atoms occupy, which is one mole to every 24 decimeters cubed. So, if we were to have two moles, we would have twice as much volume. If we would have half a mole, we would have half as much volume, as indicated by the, uh, the parameters you can see. Okay? And therefore, we can relate volume and, um, and number of moles by a molar gas constant, which is 24 decimeters cubed per mole. And just like how we can calculate the number of moles by using mass instead of volume, we can calculate the number of moles of gas by dividing the volume by the molar gas constant. And um, the volume, if you're going to use the molar gas constant of 24 decimeters cubed per mole, the volume that you must uh, convert to before dividing must be in decimeters cubed. So I'm going to show in this, uh, in this particular situation. So you're asked to find the number of moles of uh, a particular gas, any gas, whereby the volume is 12 centimeters cubed. So what you have to do is to convert the, num the volume into decimeters cubed and then divide this by the molar gas constant. And by doing this, you will get a value of 0 0.05 moles. So this is very basic. This is a very, very basic, maybe one or two mark question. All right. A uh, more common one would be something like uh, whereby you have to uh, use a particular concept. So if we were to take a look at this reaction, what volume of ammonia gas is created when 72 centimeters cubed of nitrogen gas reacts with excess hydrogen? So the vo the, this reaction is essentially the Haber process, whereby hydrogen reacts with nitrogen in order to produce ammonia, a very important industrial process. So for any particular reaction, we must look at what is the limiting reagent and what is the reagent that is in excess. So in this situation, hydrogen is in excess, forcing nitrogen, the other reagent, to be limiting. So therefore, nitrogen will determine, the, the volume of nitrogen or the number of moles of nitrogen will determine how much ammonia gas we will produce. So, and just like any basic equation, uh, equation question. In order to find certain important values, we must first find the number of moles of all of the elements and compounds of a particular reaction. So, which number of moles 
can we find? So we look at it and we have a known volume, a limiting volume of nitrogen, which is 72 centimeters cubed. Now, we can use our previous concept on the molar gas, which is volume divided by molar gas constant. We can find the number of moles of nitrogen. So 72 divided by 1,000 in order to find the decimeters cubed volume. And divide this by 24, you get a, a number of moles of 0 0.003 moles. All right. And as you can see, there is a linear mole ratio between the number of um, ammonia molecules produced and the number of nitrogen and moles reacted. Okay, so which is two to one for every nitrogen gas molecule, you have two uh, ammonia gas molecules produced. So therefore, the mole uh, moles of ammonia will essentially be the moles of nitrogen times by two. Okay, and since uh, we're going to use the molar gas assumption that for every mole we're going to have 24 decimeters cubed of gas. So we can use this in order to find the number of uh, the volume of ammonia gas produced, which is essentially the number of moles, 0 0.06 times by the molar gas constant. And this will give us a volume of 0 0.144 decimeters cubed, which we can convert to centimeters cubed by multiplying by 1,000, which is 144 centimeters cubed. And there will be a much easier way to solve this equation. Okay, now as you can see, we have the same process, right? And we can see that there's a constant mole ratio between all of the products and reagents. So for every nitrogen molecule, every uh, N2 molecule, three hydrogen molecules will react and two ammonia molecules will be produced. And since this, all of the reagents are in a gas state, we can see that the mole, the ratio between moles and volumes will be constant. Okay, so therefore, since we have a linear relationship between the number of moles and the linear relationship between mole and volume, the mole ratio will be the same as the volume ratio. So, what is the mole ratio between ammonia gas and nitrogen gas? That is two to one. So, therefore, the volume will also be. The volume ratio will also be 2 to 1. And therefore, uh, we can find the volume of ammonia gas produced by multiplying the volume of nitrogen gas produced by 2, because there's a constant volume ratio. So we multiply 72 by 2 will give us 144 centimeters cubed. Okay, very basic. Now let's just quickly summarize this video. So point number 1. One mole of any gas will occupy 24 decimeters cubed volume at a room temperature and pressure. And this is known as the molar gas constant. And this is based on the assumption. It's, it's, it's an assumption. Okay. And finally, if there is a gas reaction, or essentially all the products and reagents in that reaction are gases, the mole ratio will be equal to the volume ratio. All right, thank you very much for watching my video. And I wish you all good luck in your examinations. Bye-bye.